calls are meant to take a nuclear blast. This is the Titan Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Its mission, deliver a payload to a designated spot on the Earth's surface some 5,500 nautical miles away. Its warhead could level an entire city. feet underground is the control center of the command guidance system. The operations room houses most of the radar equipment and the entire guidance computer. The ground guidance equipment is maintained in a targeted condition. All the materials required for inserting nine targets into the computer are supplied in a single targeting package. A target tape, a guidance program tape, a digital simulation tape. Included in the launch control folder are nine plastic re-entry vehicle cards and launch control console labels. Target and guidance program tapes are fed into the computer to steer the missile to the selected target on desired trajectories. The information now stored on the computer drum is checked for accuracy of transfer. The re-entry vehicle cards are placed in a reader, which transmits the fusing information to the re-entry vehicle. The console labels are placed on the launch control console to identify the target stored in the computer. Using the stored information and the digital simulation tape, a closed loop test is simulated. Resulting computer commands are compared with pre-calculated values stored on the digital simulation tape. The missile combat crew commander can then set each launcher switch at the target designated by Strategic Air Command. Each target is then verified. For each target, target package identification and target designation numbers are printed out. These should correspond exactly to values supplied in the target kit folder. When targeting is completed, nine targets are stored in the guidance computer. At any time, new targets may be substituted by selecting a target kit from the tape library, reading the new target tape into the computer, and substituting new re-entry vehicle cards and identification labels. So welcome back to the Challenge on One. I mean, this Titan One was a fully functional underground subterranean city with features such as independent power, water, sewer, kitchens, bathrooms, sleeping quarters, and all the air filtration systems. The full suite of instrumentation required for nuclear annihilation was all housed in the operations room of the control dome. Missiles would remain vigilant behind the computer consoles around the clock, ready to deploy their thermonuclear arsenal. And this particular control dome measured 50 feet high and 100 feet in diameter. It's kind of strange to traverse through the dark, rusty corridors of this abandoned Titan One facility and think about the threat of nuclear annihilation. 
that weighed upon the nation's conscience throughout the Cold War. The threat still hangs over our heads today, but people don't seem nearly as concerned. The missileers would work and live underground on a 14-day shift. So here is Pat to explain the cunning protocol of the control dome. We're going to start with these walls, and these are four inch panels, fully insulated, one piece, and they're dropped in here, and they are not, I, the first day I came in to take these down, I tried cutting the slot across, I tried cutting from top to bottom, tried pying these, pying these out of this three inch channel basically that it sits in, I could not get these panels out. There, you have, we had to reverse engineer this and start from the beginning and go backwards, or from the end and go backwards. So each, each panel is put together individually, okay? So what we have here is it's a three inch by four inch I-beam that's welded on the bottom Underneath every one of these walls, there's a four inch, four to five inch strip of metal that's placed in the concrete that it sits upon, okay? And then what happens is they, they weld the I-beam top and bottom, and they slide in each panel, which fits inside this channel, and then these two snap together like Legos, tack welded top and bottom, and there's a three inch panel on the bottom that's bolted to that iron plate on the bottom, and then again, they just continue on, okay? And then they add the next I-beam, and then it fits into this channel, and then it fits into that channel, and that channel, and then the Lego effect again, tackle, tackle, way over. I mean, these walls were not going to come down. They won't just fall apart. It's, it's, it probably takes 30 to an hour to take off two panels completely and to, to remove them. So yeah, these walls were meant to take a nuclear blast. They were not coming down, but they're fully insulated and strong. Even today, 65 years later, 60 years, whatever, these, strong, these walls are strong. These are iron beams attached to the floor, welded, bolted, in channel. It's amazing. They weren't meant to come down. These panels in the control dome were engineered to protect the missile engineers from debris and associated thermal heat. And all of these design considerations in a control dome were to increase the chances of survivability after a Russian first strike. So if the United States was attacked first, even if the country was in ruins, the US would have its radioactive revenge with its Titan One assassin lurking underground. The doctrine of mutually assured destruction.
Each day at the Title I is a day of reverse engineering deconstruction methods. And the metal pile in the control dome continues to build. The cacophony and amalgamation of cutting equipment continues to pierce through the complex.